emotional intensities and different roads that lead to conclusions. May we combine clarity of mind and kindness of heart, and may we be impartial without bending to strong personalities. May we sacrifice self-interest for the good of the whole. May we do our work with love and clarity and the vision for the benefit of those we serve. Thank Please you. Be seated. So I'll call the regular meeting of May 16th to order, and I would ask uh, Ms. Robertson if we have any additional late items that weren't uh, published in the amended agenda. Uh, there was one additional late item, which is an email from Robert and Hilary Conebear, and it's regarding the development variance permit on the agenda tonight for 545 Jubilee Street, and so it can be considered under the reports of committees item 6.1.1. And I did circulate a copy to council as okay, well. Okay, I see it on my desk here. Okay. Okay, so I will ask for uh, approval of the agenda as amended. So moved and seconder. Thank you. And any discussion on that? All in favor? Opposed? That motion's carried. So I would like to have, there's several minutes to adopt, so we have the uh, council minutes of April 18th and the motion to adopt. So moved. moved and seconded. Any discussions, errors, omissions? Hearing none, all those in favor? Opposed? The motion carries. Item 4-2, which is the May 2nd uh, council, uh, special council minutes, and they are there for adoption for May 2nd. So mover and seconder. Any discussion on the minutes? Hearing none, all those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, we also have the May 2nd Committee of the Whole minutes, and they're also there for adoption. So moved. Moved and seconded. Thank you. Discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. And we have the Special Committee of the Whole minutes for May 9th, uh, and also for adoption. Mover, seconder, thank you. Discussion on those minutes? All those in favor? Opposed? Motion carries. So we move uh, immediately to the um, report of the Chief Administrative Officer, and I believe you circulated a written version of it, Mr. Durfertai, but if you'd like to touch on the highlights. Thank you, Your Worship. I'll just touch on a few of them. The Second Street Capital Project, the request for quotations uh, closed on May 13th, and staff are in the process of reviewing those two, pro two proposals that were received. The special council meeting will be scheduled for June 6th prior to the committee meeting to award the contract. The coordination traffic study uh, was awarded in April and is uh, well underway. We expect to have the consultant present their results to the June council meeting. That will be at a council meeting, not yeah. committee at all? Yes, okay. This study reviews the pedestrian safety and options on coordination, particularly at the Festerbird and St. Julian intersections. The draft zoning bylaw uh, continues to have internal reviews uh, we'll, and will do so over the summer months uh, prior to present it to a committee of the whole meeting. Some new developments applications have uh, been received that will likely take priority over the zoning bylaw and push, push the data off a little bit. For the marketing strategy, the meetings have been held with the BIA to jointly discuss the strategy and prioritize its implementation. These meetings have proceeded quite well and a uh, tourism meeting will be scheduled in the near future to confirm next steps before bringing the strat strategy to the June Committee of the Whole meeting. And lastly, I just wanted to make note that notices, the property tax notices will be made, mailed out on May 20th, and newspaper ads will advise taxpayers to contact the city if they do not receive their notices before the end of May. Okay. Thanks. And there are a few other things if you get a chance to peruse it through the meeting. Uh, we'll take questions from, to the CAO in the end, at the end of the meeting. Okay, so we move on to reports of committees. We have the May 2nd, 2016, um, and this, I assume this is the Committee of the Whole reports. Is that correct? Okay. Uh, normally, because this is related to development, um, normally the chair would uh, present those, but if I can do it, they're quite lengthy. Okay, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> Okay, so we have uh, item 611, which is the development variance permit 2016-02 for 545 Jubilee Street. And there is quite a long recommendation. I'll read off the main parts of it. The council approved development variance permit application number DVP 2016-02 for the proposed development of a three-story building 
with six dwelling units at 4, 545 Jubilee Street and 211 First Street. Um, as attached to the May 16th report of the manager of planning to admit the following. And the setbacks uh, to the variance are uh, to vary uh, section 7.5B5 of the zoning bylaw number 1540 for the portions of the development shown in the attachments. First, to vary the front yard setback from 7.5 meters to 1.78 meters for the proposed building. Item two, to vary the exterior east side setback from six meters to 1.8 meters from the proposed building. And three, to vary the rear setback from 7.5 meters to 2.1 meters for the proposed building. Uh, it goes on to parking variances to vary table one and two of the off street parking and loading bylaw number 3098 as follows to vary the required number of parking spaces from 1.2 spaces per unit, eight spaces, to one space uh, per unit, six spaces. Item two to vary the maneuvering aisle widths from 7.3 meters to 6.78 meters. And three to vary section 4.6A of the off street parking and loading bylaw number 3098 to permit 100% of the proposed parking to be designated specifically for small cars. And at, develop, at the end, that the development uh, variance permit 2016 02 contained the following conditions that be met to, uh, prior to issuance of the building permit or proposed the proposed development. Provision of a statutory right of way for one meter of one meter lane widening, or sorry of the uh, right of way for the one meter lane widening from the entrance to the lane and to the proposed driveway and for a 0.5 meter setback widening along the northern four meters of the east side of the property and item two provision of a security deposit in the amount of 125 percent of the estimated cost for the off-site improvements uh, to the sidewalk and lane and that is the recommendation is there a mover for that Moved and seconded. Uh, does staff want to uh, just give a, another overview? I see we have something up on the screen, so would they just like to give a bit more detailed overview for the public watching? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Um, the development permit application also... Now, Mr. Pay, you have to use the microphone. You can Sorry? actually take it off the stand if you like and hold it, then that okay. we might be able to, uh, to uh, look at this, the screen more closely. Thank you. Okay, I'll start with the development permit uh, just to give a bit of context to the development variance permit, which is included at the end of this presentation. Um, the uh, location plan, you can see that it's um, a Jubilee, the um, subject property is outlined in red here at the corner of First Street and Jubilee. Uh, this property is, has, is, has an approximate area of 653 square meters, so a reasonable size lot. Um, it used to... Uh, Zoning, I'll start with zoning. This property is in the RM4, so that's our multifamily townhouse uh, style zone. Um, here we can see the property which in this photo shows that there are buildings on the site. Uh, there are no longer buildings on this site. They've both been uh, demoed, and so the site is clear and the lot's consolidated. Uh, this parcel on the northern uh, half of the site has um, a total width of approximately 18 meters by 13 meters, so approximately 245 square meters. So on its own, a little bit too small to support um, development. Even for a single family dwelling would be difficult given these setback requirements on a, uh, required within the zone. And uh, so now that it's consolidated with this lot, we have an approximate uh, frontage of 18 by about 36.5 meters in depth. Uh, the zoning bylaw considers this area on First Street as the front yard. So when we talk about setbacks, to the building and, and when we're talking about front yards, it's from the first street on the south end and this being the uh, external side yard and off the lane is considered the rear and then of course an internal side yard. Here we can see a few views of the property. Here you'll see the existing uh, house still on the property. Um, again here as well and a view from the east. You can see the, an existing building there which is no longer there. Here you can get an idea of the scale of the site, the size of it. You can see in the background here the multifamily building um, that Curtis Stretch uh, built a, a number of years ago um, that uh, is complementary sort of um, as a multifamily style building which will be roughly equivalent to the sort of scale of the building that is proposed on this site um, as well immediately across the street on Jubilee. Uh, there's a recently completed project um, for a five-unit building on two levels. Uh, here we see the proposed site plan. Um, the, the area in blue gives you an idea about the area of the building which is required uh, 
or which encroaches into the setback requirement for the property. You can see that on the front, because this being first, um, we've got a front yard setback of 1.78 meters, and along the side, on the Jubilee side, it goes down to 1.8, and on the rear, 2.1. This area along the rear of the building is the rear yard and the area where the drive aisle is to be located. So this gives you an idea of the sort of um, some elevations of the building to give you an idea of the sort of form and character of it. Uh, I think the applicant's done a good job of articulating the building front and creating some visual interest with the addition of gables on the mid-story and entrance features on each of the, um, the four internal units on the front. Um, there's an additional entrance to the first unit, actually, off of, off of um, Front Street. You can see that elevation here. And another entrance on the end of the building here. So for a total of six units, one, two here, two here, and then the final one right here. Here we see a perspective. And um, this perspective came after the advisory design panel had a chance to review the um, proposal. Uh, the design panel made a number of recommendations, um, one of which was to create uh, more visual interest in the building by articulating the building front to a greater degree. Uh, the applicants have responded by popping out these um, gables on the front elevation to create some shadow line and relief along the frontage, as well to inset the entrances and create a little pop-out feature with these canopy structures over the doors to create uh, better articulation overall to the, uh, to the um, form of the building. Uh, in addition, the design panel uh, requested um, some details about the landscaping, uh, and it, which includes a number of sort of native drought tolerant species along the frontage, including um, ornamental cherry trees that you can see along the frontage. Uh, in addition to the landscaping, the applicant has also provided uh, wood trellis style fencing and that's matched to the entrance structures and also to the shingling and the end gables to introduce a lot of wood features into the building and a bit of whimsy in the chain of the, each of the individual door colors to create a bit of additional visual interest. Here we see a landscaping plan. It's a, it's a simple landscaping plan, um, primarily lawn in these green sections, but with some nice pockets of, uh, of um, plantings along e either end with the uh, introduction of the, the uh, ornamental cherry trees, a small little um, um, area here for the um, refuse containers and recycling along this elevation on the lane for access from the lane. And you can see that access here is through from Front Street through the lane to make it easy to navigate from the front and through the back of the site and into the individual parking spaces in each one of the units. Each unit in this development has its own individual parking space. Here, um, it more clearly shows the fence details uh, along the frontage, fence number two uh, along the rear of the site, uh, and matched by the garbage enclosure that we saw here in this portion of the site. Uh, it also shows us the drive aisle along the rear. This drive aisle has been reduced to 6.78 meters in order to accommodate small car access to the site and uh, maneuvering of small cars into each one of the individual parking spaces under the building. Here it just shows um, an illustrative example of how maneuvering is afforded into the site and into the unit. Uh, and well, I'm not sure why that car was paced there, but to show that there is a, po a possibility for parking along the rear uh, that would still allow for the passage of other vehicles through the drive aisle. So here's a recommendation. Um, I won't read out the recommendation. We've already um, covered that. And prior to I'll move into the development variance permit, uh, which you've also uh, read out the conditions of the development permit. Um, here, I've identified a little more clearly specifically where the variances are proposed, um, and I've expanded the view a little bit. So um, item number one, to vary the front yard setback from 7.5 meters to 1.78 meters, and that's in this location on the, um, the southern portion of the building. This would actually be the frontage. Two, to vary the ex uh, exterior east side setback from six meters to 1.8 meters for the proposed building, and that was along the frontage on Jubilee. And here, uh, finally, to vary the rear yard setback from 7.5 meters to 2.1 meters for the proposed building, and that's uh, at the rear of the building on lane. And again, I'm showing this uh, drawing just to show the um, approximate scale of a small car 
and the width of the drive aisle, which is uh, proposed um, within the variance to reduce from the 7.2 meters to the 6.78 meters, which is typical for a small car two-way drive aisle, and to reduce uh, the parking from to accommodate 100% of the parking on site for purposes of um, accommodating small cars. So again, here's the recommendation. I'll move past that recommendation. Um, council, uh, staff has also put forward alternative recommendations, of course, <coughs> that council deny the requested variance or that council approve the proposed variance but require prior to issuance of the building permit a uh, cash and lieu contribution of $8,000 per parking space not provided on the site. Now the reason why we added this is because when we looked at the cash and lieu bylaw, uh, the cash and lieu bylaw specifies that developments, uh, variances may be permitted without a development variance permit uh, for reduction in up to 25% of the total parking from the site. Now what would be the two parking spaces uh, that they're unable to accommodate on the site? But because of the additional um, variances, such as moving to 100% of the parking provided for small car and the reduction in the drive aisle to 6.7 meters, staff felt that that goes above and beyond the 25% that's specified within the, parking, um, within the cash and lieu bylaw, and so put, put it forward as a recommendation for council to consider. Okay. So are, are there any uh, questions of Mr. Patty from council? Morgan. Just one question. If uh, looking at the the parking area at the back, if you get one person with a full size truck, it looks like your whole backyard is going to be hooped. Potentially, mm -hmm. this site is designed to accommodate small cars, and this development, uh, the owners will have to be forthright in their uh, potential uh, sales um, in identifying that the building is designed for small car parking only. Thanks. Any further questions to Mr. Patey? Councillor Jackman. <coughs> Thank you. I, um, I like this building very much. And um, what the setback on the east side <coughs> seems quite drastic, but in reality, it's just for the, the porches that stick out. That's right? correct. What is, the, what is the setback you know, to the building, actually? Say if the porches didn't stick out. Well, um, the the set, actual setback you can barely see here is three meters. So 9.84 feet from the property yeah. line to the front of yeah. the actual building. Yeah, so I was initially quite worried that it was going to be way too close to the street, but now that I see it, uh, I think it's going to be just fine. Okay. Uh, Councillor Bell? I think I know the answer, but I'm just confirming. So the the picture that you showed at the <clears throat> the last picture you showed of the the whole building, you said that was after the um, the feedback was given, right there, that one. So they've incorporated the they feedback have. already, and they've taken notes because I think um, I agree with that. That actually makes the building look a lot nicer. That little bit of detail and depth, but so they've agreed to that. Yes. Okay. So the motion we have on the floor then. Thank you, Mr. Patey. The uh, motion we have on the floor is, as I read out, um, with all approving those variances, including the parking variances, the the only option, and this is on the floor, so if you were to consider any other option that was provided by uh, staff, then we would have to defeat this motion um, and add uh, an alternate or approve this motion as as your list. So any f is there any discussion with respect to the variance? Okay, I'm gonna call the question on the motion that's on the floor. All those in favor? Opposed, and that motion carries. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pete. So we move to the uh, item 6.1, which is a development permit. And Mr. Pete went over that in, as part of this presentation, so it's all included here. Um, the um, uh, subject of this uh, motion is that the subject to the approval of the v development's variance permit, DVP 201602, which we've just passed, Council can consider the following, that the Council approve the development permit application number uh, DP 2016-2005 or 05 for the proposed development of a three-story building with six unit dwelling, uh, dwelling units at 545 Jubilee Street and 211 First Street uh, with all of the uh, 
the uh, legal lot uh, descriptions there as attached to the May 16th report of the manager of planning that council require the DP 2016 contain the following conditions be met prior to issuance of a building per per permit for proposed development, submission of a stormwater management plan based on the water balance model best practices, best management practices to the satisfaction of the Director of Public Works and Development Services, and the provision of a security deposit for 125% of the proposed hard and soft landscaping costs. So moved. Okay, seconder, okay. Any discussion on that? No. Hearing none, all those in favor? Opposed, and the motion is carried. Okay, thank you. So we move on to item 6.2. This is the May 9th, uh, 2016 special committee of the whole recommendations and um, I will turn that over to Councillor Duncan to go through those um, recommendations. Okay, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, item 6.2.1, uh, liquor related issues slash concerns associated with the location of the Vancouver Island Liquor Store at 5777 Trans Canada Highway. And the uh, recommendation is that the liquor related issues slash concerns in the Alexander Whistler Street area be referred to the CVRD Community Safety Advisory Commission and the RCMP to consider expanding the crime prevention through environmental design study of the Beverly Street area. On behalf of the committee, I move. Now seconded, okay. Is there any discussion on that motion? Councillor Jackson? Uh, seems to be that, that uh, as part of that discussion, somebody was going to have a conversation with the owner has that actually happened? I, it, I don't know that it has, but I think that that's anticipated to be part of the process of, of looking at the issues there um, in a broader way, both environmental design, but also looking at ways to work with the, with the um, uh, vendor there to, you know, maybe ways that they can help in initiating. Obviously, there were, um, there's a lot of things that were discussed at the joint meeting between the councils, which went far beyond just that. And then, of course, understanding that that is a symptom of other uh, social uh, um, issues that are larger with respect to the fact that we might uh, we might still have some issues with homelessness and not enough place for people for who are homeless and then other addiction services and uh, things like that so uh, that was I think the reason for having this referred to the community uh, safety advisory commission to uh, look at a in a broader way at what the social issues might be there um, that have to be uh, dealt with as well and North County is in congruence with that um, so this is really the start of the discussion, so. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other questions, discussion on this? So I'm gonna call the question, all those in favor? Opposed, that motion carries. Okay. 6.2.2, amalgamation working group, uh, amending resolution R323-15. That council amend resolution R323-15, which was previously adopted on November 20th, 2015, by substituting it with the following. That the councils of the City of Duncan and the Municipality of North Couchin direct their staff to work collaboratively with two councillors from each municipality to draft a process for conducting an amalgamation study along with a citizen's assembly that will make a recommendation to both councils on amalgamation of the two municipalities with the aim to complete the entire process within the current term. On behalf of the committee, I move. Okay. Second. Seconded. Okay. Any discussion? Councillor Staples or Bell, you might want to comment just uh, with respect to the discussions on, on this and the, the amendment. Sure, yeah. Sure. No, no, it's okay. We can make it. Yeah, I think it speaks for itself too. It's been, you know, a process that um, I feel like we're working really well as a, as a ad hoc committee that isn't a committee. Um, and it's been a great working relationship on trying to make sure that this is done in a really good way, in an inclusive way with the community, leading the process. So it's been a good process so far. Well, that's good to hear. I did attend for a short period of time, the last one, and, and I was quite encouraged about the, the discussion and the elements that would be included in, in the framework for a citizen's assembly, so I'm quite confident that that process will be uh, very useful for the community, which is where it uh, should reside. So thanks for that. So any... I don't think it was mentioned at this point, no. So uh, the, that was moved and seconded. Is, is there any question, other questions or dialogue? Hearing none, then all those in favor? Opposed, that motion carries, thank you. 6.2.3, the draft Citizens Assembly Amalgamation Study Process. 
that Council approve the Draft Citizens Assembly Amalgamation Study Process dated May 5th, 2016 and direct staff to work collaboratively with two councillors from each municipality to oversee the process with, with the aim to complete the entire study process within the current term. On behalf of the committee, I move. Okay, second it. Thank you. Councillor Staples, yeah. Um, and, and just too, that this, this process is um, the one that we're working with so that it is a, a citizen-driven process and it's, um, it removes the, the political, either political side from it, um, whether it be North Cowichan or Duncan, as well as staff. It puts no one in a, in a position where they're influencing um, a decision one way or the other. And the study provides all the facts that the Citizens Assembly needs to um, make their decision. Okay, great, thank you. Or a recommendation, I should say. Yeah. Um, and I just want to say that this is actually a really big opportunity for Duncan and North Couch. And I think these citizens assemblies are something that um, a lot of people are interested in and would like the opportunity to do, but they're complicated and you have to have two p willing partners. Well, in this case, you have to have two willing partners and, um, you know, you have to have uh, the right intentions. And so I think it's a really uh, cool opportunity. For Duncan, other communities will be watching this for sure. It's a yeah. leadership role. I, I think that's right. I don't think it has ever been applied in this particular context, and and uh, uh, citizens assemblies are used often at a very ho much higher level, national and some or possibly provincial levels. But uh, I think there's uh, examples where it was used in the smaller context in communities. So. Um, it's certainly something we, we all understand when we had it with respect to electoral reform in BC a whole number of years ago. Um, but the whole process uh, has always intrigued me and I think this is really um, a way, some way to do that where the citizens really feel like when they're involved in it that they're actually having an impact and that their recommendations that come forward will be well informed and I think that's, that's really the, the best value for it. So I'm quite supportive of it. So, Councillor Stevens. And I just want to clarify too, after reading some articles, that this is, doesn't mean that amalgamation is done or is certain. What it means is that both councils will be getting back recommendations um, to see how we proceed forward and that the community will have the final say in this process. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to call a question on that motion. All those in favor? Opposed? That's carried. Thank you. And I do want to uh, um, uh, give uh, some credit to the councillors from both councils who were engaged in that. Uh, uh, it was probably a little bit of an exploration in the beginning and then once you were able to identify the things to be done, I think uh, it was done very collaborative. So I, I, for what I witnessed at the meeting, I thought it was very, very uh, productive. So. Uh, so we move on to reports of staff. Um, Actually, no, Your Worship. Oh, sorry, we still yeah. have uh, oh, no, six point two point four uh, grant funding request for amalgamation study. The council directs staff to to send a joint request to the Ministry of Community, Sport, and Cultural Development for a restructure study grant of one third of the cost of the amalgamation study and citizens assembly, and include a copy of the draft citizens assembly amalgamation study process document dated May 5th, 2016, to support the request. On behalf of the committee, I have so moved. Second. Okay, and seconded, thank you. So again, this is uh, to find the provincial support uh, for the monies that they identify for this kind of restructure. The, the uh, one anomaly here is that the Citizens Assembly is a new process for this kind of, um, this kind of a study. Um, I don't anticipate having been in touch with the province over a number of years of things like this with our restructure applications previously. Um, I think uh, they'll see this is a real positive uh, piece and they'll see the Citizens Assembly as that public process and then the uh, recommendations and other things, the study process uh, as, as more of a uh, meeting the, the needs for the information that has to be gathered. So I don't think there will be any uh, question that that will meet their uh, requirements for grant. So, but we will find out. Uh, any other discussion on this one? Hearing none, all in favor? Opposed? That's carried. Okay, so now I get to move on. Thank you, Councillor Duncan. Uh, the 2015 annual report, that the 2015 annual report be made available for public inspection by Friday, June 3rd, 2016 at 4 p.m. and posted to the city's website and that the annual meeting to confirm the 2015 annual report and to take submissions and questions from the public to be held on June 20th, 2016 council meeting at 7 p.m. in the council chambers. So moved. Okay, seconder, okay. Any discussion on this? All in favor? Oppose? That's carried, thank you. 
Um, item 7.2, this is with respect to the Sun Bowl 31, June 17th, 18th, uh, for a beer garden request. This is a fairly long recommendation. There's a lot of detail in it. Uh, council has approved this uh, for many years in the past, and I don't believe, Mr. DeVertai, is there anything in it that uh, is changed in any way? Okay, so um, I won't go through the whole of it, but I will say that Council approved the Council Women's Football League beer garden request at McAdam Park for June 17th and 18th, 2016, between 12 noon and 8 p.m., and it's subject to uh, seven, six um, conditions, which uh, typically have been uh, put in front of me before, so with respect to noise and operations and things like that. Councilor Jackson? Um, I like all of these recommendations. I'm just asking a question about number four. I thought that with the new liquor laws that you didn't have to have a separate beer garden anymore. I am in favor of having a separate, separate beer garden, separate, but yeah. I thought that the laws had changed. Yeah, that's exactly I'll allow right. Mr. to retire to answer. Yeah, there, you're right, you wouldn't have to, um, but the, the request, if I recall correctly, <coughs> didn't ask for it to be a mingling. I think they're still looking to operate exactly the same as they always have yeah. to because um, it's worked well for a number of years and okay I think many people who are anticipating that uh, unless the circumstances are really quite different um, are continuing to do that for their own security issues they're not their and their own liabilities they're not uh, mm -hmm. taking the government up on the uh, the opportunity to do it differently so, so I'd just like to move the motion okay. I don't think it was moved already oh, I thought I had sorry no you haven't moved. I asked well, beg your pardon so that's Miss Robertson. She it hasn't, hasn't been moved. moved. I'll tell you right now, it hasn't been moved. So you're moving it, seconder. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. We had a discussion in advance. So uh, with that, is there any questions or further dialogue on this? Okay. All those in favor? Opposed? That's carried. So we move to 7.3. This is with respect to the upgrades to the parking lot at 675 uh, Canada Avenue, which is where the uh, Margaret Moss Clinic is. Uh, that council directs staff to proceed the pr with the pruning of the London plane tree and removing of the maple tree in the parking lot at 675 Canada Avenue as recommended by the city's arborist in an independent review which was attached in the May 16th report from the director of finance for a maximum cost of 4,000 with funds to come from the Margaret Moss Reserve Fund and that council directs staff to upgrade the parking lot to address water ponding and safety issues caused by the tree roots at the maximum cost of 15,000 with funds to come from the Margaret Moss Reserve Fund and the Council directs staff to amend the financial plan to include these expenditures, expenditures which total a cost of $19,000. Is there a mover? Thank you. Moved. Second. Okay. Discussion? Councilor Jackson? Um, I see that you're considering um, the possibility of paving the whole um, parking lot. The entrance to that parking lot has been endlessly problematic. And because it's right at the entrance of Third Street and Canada. So people are parking to turn this way or turn this way on Canada Avenue and people are turning in this way and waiting for these cars to go so that they can get into the parking lot and blocking further entrance onto Third Street. I would like to have somebody look at that parking lot and have the entrance possibly off the alleyway, like reconfigure it so that that was the entrance now would become the exit so that there would be a different entrance either on Canada or off the alleyway and that the cars would have to exit onto third as opposed to enter off of third so before this is all finalized I think it would be wise to do that because I don't know how many times that's happened to me and I know you're down there a lot too Councillor Staples so you've probably experienced it as well um, I that could that could be added as an am amendment to for to have uh, have um, staff consider a re um, alignment of the parking lot with respect or to entrance and exit. Parking lot uh, resign. Okay. But I, it doesn't so change the motion specifically because right. okay. all the so other I things will still take I place. I move that amendment. Okay. Thank okay. you. And to so we want to be clear what the amendment is, so uh, we didn't actually do that. Um, we know what the intention is, but the words aren't there. So. Um, so that uh, we would add and that council direct staff to um, review the alignment of the parking lot for uh, the access and exit of the parking lot. Mm -hmm. Is that would be sufficient for you, Mr. Dupre? Yeah, I, 
think that's pretty clear. We'll, we'll have a look at it. Would you like it to come back before we pave the parking lot? Yes. Um, I'm not certain whether that's necessary or not, but I'm, I, now we're speaking well, to the amendment right now, so yeah. uh, Councilor, uh, do you have staples? Do you have a comment? Well, not to the redesign of the parking lot. No, I have a comment to the initial Okay, so we'll motion. let's deal with the amendment then first. If, if it turns out that it's impossible for some reason, and I don't believe for one minute that it would be impossible, but say if it did, I don't think it has to come back to another meeting necessarily, but like an email saying we looked at it and I would be satisfied with that. Okay, so this is voting on the amendment. Okay, so all those in favor? Opposed? That motion carries. So on the amended motion, Councillor Staples. Um, so my question is, is paving that, that's already a huge heat sink area when you walk down from there all the way to that, um, I can't remember which building it is, but it's just like right up on the sidewalk, the building, and it's, it's like a little oven in that whole section. And so my concern is that there's just, you've taken away a massive amount of shade and anything that cools down that space. Is there any plans on the redesign of the parking to add another tree that would grow more effectively there um, rather than just have like a big open heat sink? So the, the tree that is being removed is the much smaller one to the north. The very large tree is not <coughs> is staying. So we're only pruning the lemon plane oh. tree, which is the larger one. It will, you know, it's going to lose quite a bit or, or certain amounts of its canopy, but the larger one is staying. It's the smaller okay. one that's in worse shape and has to go. I had the I had them reverse because when I was down Me there too. talking to them, they said that they were. It sounded like the big one that was going to be taken. No, no the big one's okay. Oh, it's well, actually that's actually surprisingly. It's in very good shape. Good shape. Okay, because yeah. I had it completely backwards then from when I was down there talking to them. Yeah. Okay, well that makes me feel better. <laughs> so when they, in the Arbus report where they discussed the the details around the pruning for the London Plain Tree, they talked about uh, it. They won't be taking any really of the large chunks of the tree. It'll be uh, structural pruning, but in the smaller parts because they said that that the tree heals better that way. So, but they did say that that I mean. It was only just short of excellent. The tree isn't very, it's adapted very well to where it is. It's doing very well. So. See, I thought that was a maple tree. No, that's a London plane. That's a really big <laughs> that was one. That's my problem. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm reading the report here, and the maple tree is not in good condition. No, I was talking about the London plane, which oh, is the I one see. that we were concerned that that was the one that would okay. be removed. It's not. The, it's the other one. The maple which tree I didn't small. even notice is there, to be honest with you. It's really small. Actually. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's not really small. Much it's much, it's less significant by far than the London paint plane tree. And we'll be replanting another tree in the place of where the maple is now. Okay. <coughs> Councillor Roos? Um, are, are we proposing to uh, repave the whole parking lot or just fix it up? Bas basically, Worship, we're looking to repave everything from the stairs southward. So the remainder of the parking lot is in relatively good shape. It's not showing too much allegation and so on. So it's it's only it's repaving everything of a particular area, but uh, everything north of the um, uh, sidewalk or not sidewalk uh, step entrance is is not being repaved. We might do a small patch right at the corner. There's a small tripping hazard, little thing like that. But the rest of the surface is not bad. Okay. If we wanted to go with a complete repave, that's possible. That's that's shown listed there for an additional. There was an additional amount to 8, do that. I think it was, but. Um, Okay, so we're dealing with the amended motion, uh, main motion. So any further dialogue okay, questions? So just, so just to be clear, we're going to prune the London Plain and remove the maple. Correct. Mm -hmm. And replant. And replant something else. in place of the maple. Correct. Okay. Yeah, All right. That's what we got. I don't know how that, I have no idea how that maple tree has lived. I just, when you see it surrounded by that ocean of pavement, it's just, it's been a miracle. It's not doing well. That's clear. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to call the question on the motion. If there's no more question, uh, no more dialogue. Uh, all those in favor? Opposed? And that's carried. Thank you. So we move to item 7.4, which is the building statistics report and a motion to adopt or so to moved. receive. Second. Thank you. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? That motion carries. So we move on to bylaws. We have uh, item 8.1, which is bylaw. Number 3147, 2015, the development cost charges bylaw. Um, now, uh, previously there was a situation where uh, Councillor Bruce had uh, recused himself. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll do the same again. Okay, for, and yeah. if you just state what your conflict is? Uh, just on commercial property. Okay. okay.
Okay, and this is a motion for adoption. We've already been through three readings that council adopt the development charges costs or cost charges bylaw number 3147 2015, a bylaw to impose development cost charges. So moved. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Opposed, that motion carries. Okay, so we can have uh, Councillor Bruce back in. Okay, so we'll move on to item 8.2, which is bylaw number 3134.01-2016. This is the financial plan amendment bylaw. Uh, the council gives three readings to the financial plan bylaw amendment bylaw number 3134.01-2016, a bylaw to amend the financial plan to increase the budget for well number three standby generator, improve traffic improvements for Government Street, and to fund the shortfall for the transit pass rebate program. So moved. Okay, second there. Uh, Ms. Soldier, do you just want to give a, for the public's sake, a brief description of this amendment? Uh, so the amendments for the well number three standby generator is to move funds unspent in 2015 forward to 2016 to finish up with the project, which is um, now officially complete. Uh, a small shortfall in the transit pass rebate program that council amended the program and, and has moved forward some unspent funds from another area as well as the um, Government Street Traffic Improvement Project, and we've reallocated funds from a few other projects to help fund that project for the okay. year. Okay, thank you. So it's been moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion or questions? Hearing none, all those in favor? Opposed, that's carried. So we move on to reports from Mayor and Council. Is Council got any reports? Councilor Jackson, Duncan. <coughs> Councillor Horgan, Bell, you're okay? I'm good, Bell. Okay, okay. okay I just I will give a, a brief or at least the highlights uh, of mine. Um, I, uh, on the 29th, I uh, attended a meeting with Mr. DeVertai and uh, Ray uh, Carfentan, the CEO of the Duncan um, North County RCMP detachment to go over their performance measures. Uh, we discussed a number of uh, uh, items on that with respect to uh, making sure that uh, we would still see um, street presence with the RCMP through their bike patrol and on beat patrol, and we were assured that uh, that they they would be able to undertake those programs again. I know there have been changes. I was uh, recently emailed. Uh, um, uh, I don't know who it was from particularly. I think it was UCM possibly. Um, asking some pretty pointed questions about the, um, the um, auxiliary program and there were some changes made because of instances that happened uh, previously with respect to the safety of, uh, of um, officers who were um, on that uh, program and uh, so they, with those changes they were asking for some clarity or some questions about uh, how we would support that pro program. We haven't been able to answer them and because I, when I reviewed the questions they were quite very, very specific and, and uh, needed some clear internal knowledge, either of the department or uh, the auxiliary uh, and community policing section to answer them. So uh, the deadline for that is the, I believe the 20th. And so I'm going to undertake either uh, speaking again to uh, um, Inspector Carfentan or to the uh, community policing uh, head, uh, Carol Ann Rolls, to talk about uh, what kind of feedback they would like to provide the UBCM and the province on that. Um, there, there were still some uh, human resource shortages for the detachment, but those were being filled as, uh, uh, and we talked to uh, um, the inspector about the issues that we were experiencing over on the highway and, and the uh, area around the, the uh, Beverly Street York Road and all of those intersections. So it was a good meeting and they will um, adjust some of their things. Uh, there was some discussion with respect to the, um, to the, um, uh, prolific offender program and uh, at this time uh, the inspector said that he uh, wouldn't require any um, input or feedback from us on that uh, they were going to try to initiate or deal with those uh, those things with the um, the um, uh, uh, what do they call it uh, 
Section D or District D or District E um, with respect to the Attorney General on that program. Uh, so, but uh, we did say that if there was some feedback or assistance that was necessary for us to the Solicitor General and Section E that we would that we would actually uh, be quite willing to get involved because I think that program's been very, very, very valuable and we wouldn't want to see changes that were detrimental to it. So uh, that was the discussion I had with him. Uh, we had, of course, the joint meeting with North County Council and uh, the City of Duncan at our, in our committee room on the 9th, um, May 9th, and I thought it was a very constructive meeting. Uh, we had very good dialogue around the, some of the social issues that we were experiencing with respect to alcohol and homelessness and things like that, and I think it was a, a good start to the discussion realizing that we're, we're still not there yet. I think, you know, you accomplish things like homeless shelters and places for people with mental illness <coughs> to live and things like that, but we're obviously the job is not done. And uh, so uh, it was good to just engage in that jointly, that discussion together about where we can go. Um, and we also, of course, made progress with respect to the amalgamation uh, study. Um, I, just, um, I, was, I have been doing a great deal of things, but they're not all relevant to here for council for ICT and things like that. So um, this morning, actually, I had a chance to meet with um, the chair of the uh, advisory design panel, myself and Councillor Staples, who is our council liaison at committee. I think it was a very constructive discussion. Um, they're a very enthused group, and I think they have a lot to add. Um, but we did talk about the the issues of, of the constraints and things that we were we would need with respect to the things that they address. Uh, but there was an opportunity for them to be um, quite uh, satisfied, you know, satisfyingly engaged in. Uh, areas with respect to how we go forward with our OCP design guideline updates and things like that. So I think it was a very good meeting. Uh, I'm sure Councillor Staples would agree. Um, and then uh, this Friday, I'm going to be uh, going to the um, uh, Conference Board of Canada's uh, uh, outlook for uh, for this area for Vancouver Island. It's the first time they've done something so specific for our geographic area with respect to a forecast for the economy. So. I'll, I'll find that very soon and I'll try to bring back as much information as I can which is relative to the city for us and, uh, and then I will be leaving, uh, well there's a lot of events coming up uh, and I think some with the First Nations, one on the 24th and uh, gathering for the regional district on the 30th and um, I think I have something on the 31st, uh, ICF board meeting on the 31st and then flying to Winnipeg on the 1st so it's going to be a very busy next few weeks. So. Anyway, Councillor, I have Councillor Jackson. Yes, thank you very much. Um, May the 1st, I owe the uh, Legion an apology. Uh, <clears throat> but I understand there was some conf confusion around what time the VE Day celebrations were, and uh, I couldn't get there because I think it was earlier rather than later. Something happened anyway, so my apologies to the Legion. <clears throat> and on May 9th, of course, I also, along with everybody else, attended the Joint Council meeting. Yesterday, I attended the celebration of life for our previous commissioner. He was a wonderful man, Bob Shaw, and I shared this council's condolences with his family. And this morning, I met with the Jubilee Community Garden Society to discuss some issues around uh, this year's garden. And I just want to give a heads up to um, everybody about Sunday, May 22nd, there's going to be a Fort McMurray fundraiser put on by the Chinese community and May's Kitchen that anything that's bought between 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock on Sunday, May 22nd, the profits are going to go to benefit Fort McMurray. So we might want to have Chinese Food Day in Duncan that day. All right. I, I also believe that the um, new Red Arrow uh, Brewery is going to have a fundraiser for that as well on th this coming Thursday, I believe. And uh, all the proceeds from that will be also going to oh, Fort Mac as well. So. So there's lots of people donating. I believe $65 million has been donated to the Red Cross mm -hmm. since the fire. And I've, uh, that seems like a lot of money, but it's actually still not anywhere near enough. And uh, so donations, will, I'm sure, will still be gratefully accepted. It sounds like a lot. It doesn't go as far as I think. Um, so, Councillor Duncan. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, on uh, Wednesday the 11th, I attended the uh, Tourism uh, Showcase down in Victoria on behalf of the city. Uh, the DBIA also attended and Tourism Calgon. Um, I think that if we look at this next year, we probably actually don't need to have three tables between the three of us. We can get away with two. I think Councillor Horgan mentioned that uh, at the Tourism Committee meeting. But I certainly felt there was a lot of value in being there because 
way they organized it, they, they actually split up the, the, they did one of those passport things where people had to come to your booth and get a, a stamp or a signature. So we actually saw at the, the city table, we saw people that didn't go to the DBIA table or to the tourism table. So there was some benefit. There was people that got contact from us. Um, and then uh, from there, I actually traveled over to Vancouver to attend the British Columbia Li Library Trustees Association Conference. Uh, I was erect, uh, elected uh, director uh, to the uh, provincial body. And I've been meeting uh, with, along with Mr. DeBerti, I uh, met with the DBIA on some of the new tourism committee strategies. So, and I believe we have another meeting tomorrow. That's it, okay. thank you. Thank you. So we move on to new business. Uh, we have a proclamation uh, request, and this is Access Awareness Day, and the proclamation, the council proclaimed June 4th, 2016, Access Awareness Day in the city of Duncan. So moved. Moved by Councillor Jackson, seconder. Thank you, Councillor Dell. Any discussion on this? All in favor? Oppose? So motion is carried. Uh, we have item 10 2, the proclamation with respect to Oceans Day and Rivers to Oceans Week. The Council proclaimed June 8th as the World Oceans Day and June 4, 8th to 14th, 2016, as the World Rivers to Oceans Week in the city of Duncan. Second. Mover, seconder, okay. Any discussion on that? Okay, all those in favor? Oppose? That's carried. Uh, so question period. So we don't, I don't see public left here, so questions from council to staff, either with respect to the CAO's report or anything else. <coughs> Councilor Horgan. Any news on our light yet for Oakland? You said that the IPBC were maybe coming on board to yeah. <coughs> Sorry, I have nothing written from them but a verbal verbal confirmation that they'll pay for half of the, that upgrade. So it's, it's the on the- studies are all done, so we can move Well, ahead. the studies are done. It's more than the design aspect and getting the quotes on the actual installs. Okay, any further questions from council? Mm -hmm. Hearing none, we'll resolve to go into closed meeting. Uh, and I'm going to, oh, I have to read it out first. So, right. um, that this meeting be closed under the following sections of the community charter, section 91C, labor relations and other employee relations, and section 91E, the acquisition, disposition, or expropriation of land or improvements. So and it was moved by Councilor Jackson, <laughs> seconded by Councilor Bell. Any discussion? All in favor? Oppose? The motion carries. Okay, and a motion to adjourn? It's moved. Uh, Councilor Bell Second. and Councilor Duncan. Sorry, Councilor Duncan, punch. I forgot that was your first. <laughs> okay, all in favor? Opposed, and that's carried. Thank you. So we'll just adjourn for five minutes and we'll be back into closed session. Mm -hmm.